Hi, I'm Marie Morin. I'm a therapist and a wellness coach. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to be talking about five key factors through the lens of blame and responsibility. Naturally, when people are estranged, they want to make meaning and they look to see who's responsible. What did I do? What did they do? The first factor is layers. Every adult child and parent relationship has many layers to it. What happened when they were children? What was going on in their environment? What was going on with their siblings? What happened in the world around them? There are layers to an adult child's experiences. The parents are responsible for what happens in the relationship. However, there is never perfection. The interesting piece here is that there is a very high level of scrutiny that adult children attribute to their parents. When they're looking at their parents, it's not just about them doing the best they could. They look at their character. There's a high level of scrutiny. How did my parents do? What did they do for me? Were they good parents? Did they do right by me? Um, were they always there for me? So this imbalance is part of one of the layers of estrangement. So the differences between the perspective of the parent and the adult child is remarkable. For parents, what they normally look at is, well, that my ex alienated my adult child. We were divorced. My adult child had a very objectionable uh, personality. These are some of the comments that researchers have found parents say about their adult children. The second thing is parent-child evaluation scale. So researcher and social worker Kylie Agalias, in her book, Family Estrangement, A Matter of Perspective, discusses this idea of this parent-child evaluation scale. So here's what this is about. Relational evaluation is the extent to which a person perceives that a relational partner values them. So in terms of the adult child, what does this mean? This means that the adult child is looking at their parent and saying, does my parent value me in terms of the way that they behave? So they may perceive perhaps in their childhood, their parent worked a lot. Maybe they were busy with a new partner and the adult child may come to the conclusion that they weren't valued by their parent because their parent was too busy for them. And then they have a low relational evaluation on the scale. The key to this is that adult children look through the lens of, is my parent looking after my welfare? So their evaluation is like, did they have my back all the time? So in essence, what this means is if the adult child has a low relational value for their parent, there's this sense that um, they're not being valued. The adult child was not valued the way they wanted or expected. And there's a distance that's created and they value the relationship less because of that. Here's some things that we're going to define a little bit more. The person doing the perceiving, such as the adult child, might have felt some type of emotional or physical danger or that they were not protected. They might be evaluating their parent as having low worth and little to support their goals or emotional welfare. Perhaps this adult child feels like they were exploited. They evaluate the person, their parent, and they say that this person has used me, they've manipulated me, or they've taken advantage of me. And their perception is one of unfairness. And then another piece is, is that they feel rejected. So the person being evaluated, the parent is perceived as having negative feelings, and that they don't accept the adult child. 
and the adult child feels this sense of rejection and not connected. The third divide is the sociological changes. So we can look at families from generations ago and even just 30 years ago, where there was the sense of duty and obligation. There was no such thing. It was very rare that adult children would just pick up and say, I'm not involved with you anymore. I'm cutting ties. However, today there's been such a shift away from that. If they do not believe that the relationship with their parent makes them happy, they can choose and it's culturally acceptable for them in their perspective for them to cut off. They may not value family ties as parents do. And the fourth great dividing factor among adult children and their parents is mental health and therapy. So in Joshua Coleman's book, Rules of Estrangement, he outlines this, but let's just put it this way. So when an adult child goes to their therapist, it's normal, natural for the therapist to listen and their client before them is this person. They are going to stick by them. They're gonna be supportive of what they are told. So if they go in and they start telling the therapist, their parents did all of these different things. They felt all of these different ways. They were very uncomfortable. The adult child presents his story and his perspective. The therapist naturally is believing what they're saying and wanting to support them. And the therapeutic relationship brings up this notion that there's a cause and effect. The cause is your parents and what happened as a child created a lot of the resulting state of mind that you are in presently. Another thing an adult child might bring up in therapy is that they tried to tell their parents things that were going on for them. They could have told you, they could have said to their parent, you know what, this is what I feel. I feel this way. Likely they didn't do it as perfectly as we learn when you learn good communication skills. However, they may have communicated and the response from their parents could have been something like denial, defensiveness, rejecting them, extremely invalidating for them. When an adult child goes to their therapist and recounts this type of thing, naturally the therapist is going to understand and be supportive because it's invalidating and it was invalidating for them. They tried to say something to their parents and their parents were unable to hear them and listen. Another thing that might happen in therapy is that the adult child goes in and tells the therapist what's been going on and the therapist after hearing all of the conflict and difficulty the adult child has had that they in fact recommend that to preserve their well-being that they cut off from their family. And the fifth thing is blame of parents. So let's discuss this with this great quote by Dr. Coleman. The family more than any other institution is the place Americans tend to go sniffing when they want to root out the inhibitions, anxieties, or propensities to failure that appear to block their path to growth and achievements. Now, in other words, this is this tendency that people have when they're feeling a lot of uncomfortability about themselves and what their situation is presently, to go into their past, look at their parents and say, aha, uh -huh, I know what the cause of this is. I know why I am the way this is. This is because mom and dad did this, or this is because I never had that, or they didn't do this. And so as a result, there's this tendency to look at parenting through this lens of being a reason why an adult child does not grow and succeed in life, which is, when you think about it, extremely unfair because adult children, people do not just become affected by their parents. There's genes, there's the environment outside of their home, it's the school they were in. Personalities, just the 
differing personalities, someone being very strong-willed, or a parent who isn't very outgoing and very outspoken and seems a little distance. These different personalities can impact how the relationship goes. And so this fifth element of the great divide of blame really creates a lot of distance in understanding the differing perspectives. So let's face it. Parents make a lot of mistakes. Humans make a lot of mistakes. We are imperfect beings. Adult children make a lot of mistakes. So is it the parent's fault? I could say unequivocally, yes, if there was abuse and toxic parenting. But in many cases, it's extremely problematic and dangerous to just blame the parents. I hope this video has been a help to you. Please know that you're not alone. There are lots of resources out there for you. There's Joshua Coleman's book, Kylie Agalias' book, and my ebook. Get that, it's in the description box below. Feeling heartbroken and alone, how to pick up the pieces when you're estranged. Hit the like, subscribe, and ring the bell. See you in the next video.